So we were looking at uh, this example here. Yeah? And I said that uh, there are three elements in this uh, particular problem. Okay, you need to identify the three elements. The first element is the payment. Yeah? Know that it's six hundred thirty-two dollars per month, and the rate is one percent again per month. Yeah, and then the term, the third uh, element is forty-eight months. Yeah, so this all three yeah, must be in months. Yeah, usually the previous assumption is so far yeah, in chapter five and also the first part of chapter six, we have assumed that there is yearly payment and the interest rate is yearly. That means the compound. Yeah compounding of interest or adding of interest to the principal is done yearly yeah? and then the number of periods will be in years yeah but here you know that the payment is monthly the interest rate is monthly and the number of periods is also in months yeah actually the formula that we have seen okay this can be applied as long as the three yeah? the payment interest rate and the number of periods they are all consistent Okay, they need to be consistent. It can be months or it can be years. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but it must be consistent. If it, if one is month, then the other must all yeah the the two the other two must always be in months. Okay, so here you need to make sure that they are all consistent. Yeah, so in this particular case, they are all consistent. But I would like to highlight that this is different from yearly. Yeah, that we have seen earlier. Yeah, all right. Now we can just simply apply the formula. But before applying, yeah, let, uh, I want to just bring this down slightly so that you can see the note at the bottom. Yeah? So need, uh, need the effective interest or discount rate for every payment period. Yeah? So assuming that the interest is compounded every payment period. So you need to determine the payment first. Okay, The payment, yeah? if it's monthly, then the interest rate must also be monthly. Yeah? And then the number of periods must also be in. If the payment is yearly, then the interest rate must be yearly and the number of periods must be in years. Yeah? So it must be in that order. Yeah? So you determine the payment first. Make sure that the payment, the payment determines the interest rate that you apply. Yeah? And the interest rate that you apply will determine the number of periods. Yeah? So this must go in that order. Yeah? All right. Now, to determine how much you can borrow, we need to calculate the present value of this. Yeah? Because note that this here, how much you can borrow, this is the question. Yeah? So, what you borrow must be equal to what you pay at this interest over this period. Yeah? So, that's the principle of uh, time value of money. Yeah? So, we apply the present value yeah? because what you borrow is now. Yeah? Okay? This is the value that you get now. Okay? And this is what you pay over 48 months yeah? at this rate. So what you pay over 48 months, this yeah, in present value terms must be equal to what you borrow. So that's the principle underlying yeah, this equation. So let's go on to okay, the next slide here. So it, it gives you the timeline. Yeah, it uh, illustrates this problem in a timeline. Yeah? So you can see this here. So the, there are three elements that are known. The interest rate, 1%. This one period becomes one month. Yeah, this is one percent per month. So there are forty-eight periods. There are forty-eight payments. Yeah? This is the first payment, second payment, and so on until the forty-eight payments. These are all negative because you pay. Yeah, you make the payment. Okay, the present value of all this. So there are three elements known. This is known: the interest rate, the payment, and the term. Yeah? Three elements are known. Then the present value of all this will be the present value of annuity of all these payments, this annuity payment. And this would be the loan, yeah, the value of the loan that you borrow. Right? So if you apply the formula, present value of an annuity rather than a single cash flow. Yeah? We have used present value before in chapter 5. Okay, but in chapter 5, we have only one single cash flow. Yeah? For example, at the end of the 48 uh, period, you may have one cash flow. We want to determine the present value of this cash flow now. Yeah? That's that's what we have done in chapter 5. But here, we replace the cash flow, okay, a single cash flow with a series of annuity cash flows. Yeah? Okay.
Okay, this is a series of cash flows, but this is fixed, therefore it's called an annuity. Yeah? Right, so we can apply the formula. This is the formula. You can remember the formula that we have seen earlier. Okay, so we apply that formula here. 632. Okay, this is the payment or NVT multiplied by 1 minus, not 1 plus 1% 1 minus, oh, uh, raised to power 48 minus 1. Yeah, remember this is present value formula. Yeah? So we can use, uh, we have to use it this way, yeah? this formula. 1 minus 1 plus 1%, 1 this R, 1%, raised to power of negative N. Yeah? N is 48. Note here, this must be monthly payment, this must be monthly interest rate, and this must be period in months. Yeah. So these three must be consistent. Yeah? You cannot have this uh, yearly and this one monthly. Yeah. And this one also uh, another period. Yeah? This this three must be consistent. Yeah. All right. So if you apply this formula, then you uh, get this answer: twenty-three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and fifty-four cents. Just close, yeah, slightly less than twenty-four thousand, yeah. Now you can. Uh, there are three uh, four methods. Yeah? There's uh, we have said the yeah? time value of money can be solved using four methods. The first one is the formula. So we have used formula here. Yeah? You can also use the present value interest factor table yeah? or time value of money tables. Okay, we can use this. Yeah? This is the formula. PV present value of NUT is equals to payment. This is six hundred and thirty-two multiplied by present value interest factor NVT for R% percent and N years. Yeah? Now you need to go to the uh, present value interest factor table. Yeah? If you go to appendix in your textbook okay, and look for 1%, yeah? the 1% column okay? and then the 48 row, yeah? the N must be 48 but there is no 48. Yeah? This 48 is not given in the table. Okay, I think you have 50, one, one row you have 50, the other row, the next row is 60, yeah. So the time value table does not give all the values that you need, yeah? so it is a bit limited, the uh, time value table is limited, they don't give you all the values, yeah. Therefore, a formula is better, yeah? because you can calculate any value that you want, yeah. And here, the other problem is it's not only limited to the number of periods, even the interest rate, yeah, the column. Yeah. Some interest rates are not given. Yeah. For example, if it's 1.5%, 1.5% column is not there in the table. All right. Therefore, this is not uh, very uh, useful. Yeah. Meaning you can use it uh, in certain circumstances, okay, in certain situations, but not in all uh, situations. Yeah. So, in this particular problem, you cannot use the present value table yeah, that is available in the book. Now, this present value table, if you look at the appendix yeah, in your textbook, it is in appendix uh, B, I think, okay, table A3. Yeah? If you look at table A3, that will be the present value interest factor MAT table. <coughs> Alright, so this is how you get the formula. Yeah? Now you want to show this in spreadsheet as well and also in financial calculator and yeah, we'll, we'll show that uh, now. Now let's look at how this problem can be solved using spreadsheet. Yeah. In spreadsheet, okay, I show it in a kind of uh, table, yeah, but it's not necessary. Okay, You don't need to show this in terms of a table, yeah, but I, I show you this in terms of a table so that it's clearer yeah, when you see it on screen. Yeah. Now, you have the interest, which is 1%, okay, it's similar to, uh, or it's the same as the problem here, yeah, given on this slide just now. Okay, then the payment is 632, yeah, note that this must be negative, yeah. This is the sign convention, because it's a payment, you must say that it is a negative, yeah, there is an outflow of $632 per period, okay. And the period here, the term is 48 months. Yeah? You don't have to state month, okay? But the period is understood to be months here, yeah? 48. Okay, there is no future value here. Yeah? This is zero, okay? Now, how do you solve for the present value? This is the answer, yeah? But note this, yeah? This is how you do it. Uh, you use the Excel function, yeah? We call this equal to, can you see that here? Equal to PV, yeah? PV stands for present value, then open bracket, okay? Uh, if you just click on this, yeah, it tells you 
what these are yeah present value the first value must be the rate the interest rate yeah so you don't have to put uh, b88 and b88 is the interest rate here you can actually put uh, the actual value yeah you can type in one percent here you'll get the same answer yeah but because i want to show you yeah, all this uh, clearly each value is clearly here yeah? so i type it out separately and then just select the cell yeah here yeah? then the second value should be the number of periods yeah? so number of periods is 48 it must be in this order yeah? the order is stated here if you don't remember the order it's okay uh, you just type in equal to present value then you open bracket and you just click here it tells you which one should come first the rate then followed by the number of periods then the payment then future value and the type okay well, let's go through each one rate is one percent so this is one percent you can type in one percent or click the cell yeah which has that uh, interest rate one percent okay the second one is number of periods okay here it is 48 here you can either type 48 here or here in this case I've typed B90 yeah? because B90 is the cell that has the number of periods yeah then followed by payment okay here it must be negative 632 yeah you must key in this as negative okay negative 632 or you can put negative 632 here and click on the cell here yeah B89 then the fourth one is future value you can leave it blank or you put zero yeah here you, uh, because b91 is zero click b91 if yeah? there's no future value here okay and the last there is this type yeah? can you see this type here now this type uh, i put zero zero means the cash flow occurs this payment yeah? is ordinary annuity and yeah? that means it occurs at the end of every month not at the beginning yeah if this is beginning then you have to put one yeah? the type can be zero, two types zero or one yeah? zero means at the end of the period which is default yeah that's a default uh, in a spreadsheet that means it will automatically assume yeah it's zero if you don't specify the value but if you put that as one then it becomes uh, annuity due yeah we'll look at annuity due a bit later yeah annuity due means the payment this payment occurs at the beginning of the period not at the end of every month yeah? but at the beginning of every month all right once you've keyed in all this and then you just take, click here okay then you get the value yeah? very straightforward 23,999.54 which is exactly the same answer as we have got on the slides Okay, this is one method. And now we look at how this can be solved using the financial calculator application. Alright, yeah, so you go to this financialcalculator.com. Yeah? So you can choose this. Yeah? You can just key in this financialcalculator.com and then you will get this, this uh, page here, yeah? this website. Now you can use this. Okay, here you key in the payment. Yeah? Note that it must be negative 632 right don't forget the negative yeah future value is zero okay the annual rate here it says annual ignore that yeah you just put one percent because it's one percent period yeah you put that as 48 all right now come to this compounding okay put that as annual yeah annually yeah even though it's monthly okay but this rate here is already one annual and yeah? the computer or the system yeah assumes that this is the annual rate so this uh, period yeah, must also be annual annual or once every period yeah so here there are 48 periods so it's compounded 48 times yeah? so that it's already monthly yeah so make sure that it's consistent yeah this is annual rate because annual this must be one period here uh, is 48 the system will assume it's 48 years yeah but it doesn't matter yeah because it's one percent per year yeah so it's the same as one percent per month and this becomes 48 months yeah and this becomes even though it's annually this is yeah in in the in your calculation is monthly yeah even though the system assumes that it's annual yeah all right so you have put in all this okay then you just click on present value okay you get the, the value here yeah 23,999.54 yeah you can also try this Note that this mode must be end. Yeah? End here means the payments occur at the end of each month. 